welcome to class pm today we are going to discuss about real numbers see here what are real numbers we can say that set of rational or irrational numbers together are called real numbers what are these rational numbers and irrational numbers in previous classes you already come across all the numbers like natural numbers whole numbers integers and rational numbers now in this session we will see what are the rational numbers and what are the irrational numbers how to identify them and how to come to a conclusion that whether the number the given number is rational or irrational if you observe in this picture we know that what are the natural numbers 1 2 3 4 so on these are called natural numbers here we are not identifying zero if we add zero to the set of these numbers we can say that those are whole numbers that whole numbers will start from 0 in case of natural numbers starts from 1 then coming to the point of integers what are integers integers may be negative or positive so in the if you think about the number line in the middle point is 0 and right side positive numbers left side negative numbers integers means it includes negative numbers 0 and positive numbers coming to the rational number if we represent any number in the format of p by q p and q may be any variables that we can say it as a rational number for example 1 by 2 2 by 3 4 by 6 whatever it may be here p by q format we are representing p and q are integers and q should not be zero why we know that because we cannot divide any number with zero so that q always should not be zero so including all these numbers natural numbers whole numbers integers and rational numbers we call all these numbers as real numbers from the picture you can derive that all natural numbers are whole numbers but all whole numbers are not natural so in the same way all whole numbers are integers but all integers cannot become whole numbers see here all integers can be rational but all rational numbers cannot be integers that's why we are representing in the circular in the most shall is natural numbers and we are coming up with the whole numbers integers and rational numbers and there are irrational numbers what are irrational numbers the numbers which we cannot represent in p by q format those we can call it as irrational numbers for suppose if you take root 2 can we represent root 2 in a fraction like p and q that is p by q no we cannot represent that one and even we cannot represent in any other format of the numbers given here so that this is considered as irrational number in the same way pi value root 5 root 7 and so on if you observe here the numbers under the root are primes but suppose if you take another number root 4 can you say that is this rational or irrational it is not irrational number because it can be 2 square 2 square is equal to 4 so the square will be go on 2 will be represented we have to represent in a simplified manner the value of root of 4 is 2 so that 2 is the what is that number it is a natural number so it's not irrational it is coming under the section rational number we can say that the prime numbers which are under the root are all considered as irrational numbers along with pi also so these irrational numbers cannot be represented in the manner of p by q together this rational numbers and irrational numbers together we call them as real numbers what are real numbers real numbers having two major sections that is rational and irrational in the rational numbers we are having integers whole numbers natural numbers see this example 2 by 5 we need to observe that when we are representing in the rational number whether it is terminating or non terminating number if you see here what do you mean by terminating or non terminating if you observe some divisions it keeps go on quotient that is no end for that those are called non terminating numbers but suppose if you take 2 by 5 it is terminating because when we are cancelling with 5 that is when the division operation is performed 2 is not going in the 
5. So what we have to do? We have to put the dot that is decimal place and then adding 0. 5 was a 20. So we are getting value as 0 0.4 here. Here it is terminated. It is exactly divisible. 20 is divisible by 5. So this is called terminating and the number given by here that is the fraction given here 2 by 5 is the terminating rational number. It is terminating. It is having the terminating point and as well as when we are representing 2 by 5, this is a fraction and which is a rational number. In the same way, see another example 9 by 11. The value of 9 by 11 is, if we represent in the decimal format, it keeps on going. 0 0.818181, it go on like that. So it is not terminating anywhere. So that we are calling this one as non-terminating and 81 is repeating, repeating in decimal places. So... This is called non-terminating. Let us explore the real numbers in detail. The fundamental theorem of arithmetic. What is this fundamental theorem of arithmetic? If you observe in the number system, the natural numbers, that is, it starts from 1. We can say that 1 is neither a composite number nor a prime number. The prime number, the least prime number, we can say it as 2. 1 is neither composite number nor prime number. So, natural numbers except 1 can be written as a product of their prime factors. What we can do with the natural numbers? We can represent up except 1, we can represent everything as a product of prime factors. But suppose if you take example 3, that is 3 is the prime number and it is one factor. If you take 6, that is 2 and 3. 2 and 3 are the prime numbers and we are representing this value in the by means of product of these prime numbers. In the same way if you take 9 number, 3 is prime number and 3 is also prime number. By representing 3 by 3, that is nothing but the product of prime numbers, we are representing the value of 9. In the same way if you take 253, we can represent by using prime numbers 11 and 23. So, the product of 11 and 23 is equal to 253. What we understood with this, we can accept number 1. We can represent any natural number by means of product of prime numbers. Every composite number can be written as a product of power of primes. That is powers of primes. Just now we discussed about we can represent in the form of product of primes. But suppose if the same prime number repeated, we can represent that with the squares or powers. It need not be always square, square, cube, like that. So, what we are doing here, we can represent that one by means of powers of primes. If you see the example here, the given number is 1,63,800. If you factorize this one, the factorial form of the number is 3 times multiplied to 2 times multiplied 3 and 2 times multiplied 5 and 1 times 7 and 1 times 13. The product of all these primes gives the value of this one. That is 1,63,800. This is representation in the form of prime factors. If we see here, we are having 3 2's that we can represent in the power format. That is 2 cube into, there are 2 3's here. So we can represent that one in the form of 3 square. In the same way 5 square. 2 cube into 3 square into 5 square into 7 and into 13 will give the value of 1,63,800. In the same way, see this example here. This one we can represent it as 3 square into 3,803 and 3,607. Observe here, these two numbers are prime numbers. You check it yourself, these numbers are prime or not. The first theorem, the fundamental theorem of arithmetic is nothing but every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes and this factorization is unique apart from the order in which the prime factors occur. So, the order is not mandatory here. It need not follow the same order. But suppose multiplied by 3 again the 
big number may come and again least number may come. So after 13, again multiplication of 2 will come. So order is immaterial here. Every composite number can be expressed as a product of primes and this factorization is unique. This one you have to remember. This word is very important. This factorization is unique. It is having its unique. That is, it's only one. Its factorization is unique apart from the order. We need not bother about the order in which the prime factors occur. These prime factors 3 may come later, 13 may come before, whatever it may be the order, it's immaterial. But what we have to understood here is the composite number can be expressed as a product of primes and this factorization is a very unique manner. We have already studied about HCF and LCM. Let us have a glance about it. HCF means highest common factor. LCM means least common multiple. The method also known as prime factorization method. How do you find LCM and HCF? By the method of prime factorization method. See here example the 12. HCF and LCM of 12 and 18 we are finding. 12 is equal to prime factorization method I already said. So we have to find the prime numbers. Prime factorization that is 2 into 2 that is 4, 4 into 3, 12. We can represent this one as 2 square, 2 square into 3. That is nothing but 12. In the same way see 18 that is 2 into 3 into 3. So 1, 2 digit is there and 3 are 2. That is nothing but we are representing in the form of 3 square. This is power we are keeping. The HCF of 12 and 18 after prime factorization has been done for the given numbers we need to find the HCF and LCM. The HCF of given numbers that is 12 and 18 is equal to 2 to the power of 1 and into 3 to the power of 1. Even if we don't represent this one also okay. Just for understanding I added here. 2 into 3 that is nothing but 6. The HCF of 12 and 18 is equal to 6. Why? What happening here? We are taking the product of, we are taking the product of smallest power of each common prime. Smallest power, what is here? Smallest power is nothing but 1 here. And taking from each prime. How many primes are available here? 2 and 3 only. So we are taking 2 and 3, which is, which are having least prime factors in the numbers. That is nothing but HCF. That is highest common factor how to calculate. It is nothing but product of the smallest power of each common prime factor. In the same way see LCM. LCM of 12 and 18 is equal to here we need to take the highest power. Highest prime factor we need to take. That is nothing but here is the 2 square and here is the 3 square. So, the product of 2 square into 3 square is nothing but 3, 6. 2, 2 is 4 and 3, 3 is 9. 4, 9 is 36. That is LCM of 12 and 18. We can define in the given example what we understood is product of the greatest power of each prime factors. Numbers are nothing but LCM. Here I have given explanation about this HCF. 6 into that is HCF of the given number and LCM of the given number is equal to the product of the actual given numbers. That is nothing but see here the HCF of 12 and 18 is equal to 6 and LCM of 12 and 18 is equal to 36. 636 to 16 and the given numbers are 12 and 18. If you multiply these two, 216 answer will come. So what we understood with this, the product of HCF and LCM and the actual product of the given numbers are the same. We can derive this one from with the example given here. HCF of AB into LCM of AB. Here A and B are the numbers. Is equal to A into B. This one we should understand. Now let us see rational numbers and their decimal expansions. Rational numbers and their decimal expansions. When we are taking any rational number that is represented in the form of p by q. When we are representing in the form of p by q, we can get a decimal values. So, how to represent a rational number in the form of decimal expansions? 
terminate in decimal forms of some rational numbers. Let us see this example, terminate in decimal forms. It means that just I already told you about what is terminating and what is non-terminating of uh, decimal numbers. The example given here is 0 0.375. This we can represent in the form of 375 divided by 1000. That is nothing but 375 by 10 cube. This is in the form of fraction. Let us see the prime factorization to get simplest rational form of the same one. 375 by 10 cube can be represented by 3 into 5 cube. 375 means the 5 cube is nothing but 5 5 is 25. 25 5 is 125. 125 into 3, 375. We are representing in the form of prime factorization. In the same way 10 cube can be represented as 2 cube into 5 cube. If we simplify this one 5 cube 5 cube will be cancelled here and 3 by 2 cube that is nothing but 3 by 8. This is the simplest form of the fraction. So the given example here the second example is 1.04 that can be represented in the fraction form that is a rational number format 104 by 100 because we know this one, this is very simplest thing you already learned in your previous classes. If you have how many decimals, we can put it uh, that many zeros in front of the 1. That is here we are having two decimal values we are keeping divided by 100. In the same way here we are having three decimals here we are keeping 1000 here. If we have four decimal places here, we need to keep the say given number by 10,000 like that. Here 104 by 100, that can be represented in the form of 104 by 10 square. If we simplify or else fa prime factorization with the given number 104 by 10 square is equal to we can factorize like 2 cube into 13 and divided by 10 square can be represented as 2 square into 5 square. So we can get the resultant value is 26 by 5 square. 2 square, 2 square will be get cancelled. 13 twos are 26 by 5 square. 5 square is nothing but 25. The given value can be simplified in the rational number format that is 26 by 25. In the same way you check for this one. The given number is 0 0.0875. We are having 1, 2, 3, 4 decimals are there. So we are keeping 875 by 10,000. That can be represented in the form of 875 by 10 to the power of 4. You just simplify this one with the prime factorization and simplify the problem. If we observe, if you observe these two examples, what we can observe here is the 10, the denominator having 10. That may be multiple of 10 square or 10 cube or 10 to the power of 4, whatever it may be. We are getting only two prime numbers that is 2 and 5. Because 10 number, 10 base number is having prime factors of 2 and 5 only. So whatever the number may be, it's a multiple of 10 means we will get only 2 and 5 as the prime numbers, the power may be changed. So we understood that the only prime factors of 10 are nothing but 2 and 5 only. With this we can derive a theorem that if you think that let x be a rational number whose decimal expansion terminates. So the decimal expansion should be terminated, it should not be non-terminating decimal number. Let x be a rational number, if you take x that is a rational number, with the decimal expansion having a termination, then x can be expressed in the form of p by q. This decimal which are terminating can be represented in the form of p by q where p and q are co-primes, where p and q are co-prime and the prime factorization of q is of the form of 2 to the power of n, 5 to the power of m. These powers may be changed but the factors of 10 are always 2 and 5. So we are getting the prime factorization of q that is nothing but denominator is in the form of 2 to the power of n and 5 to the power of m where n and m are non-negative integers. We understood with these examples. These are non-negative integers only. It may be square, cube or 4 or 5 whatever it may be. The reverse also possible. So if the number is given in the fraction format we can reverse this into decimal format. So that is converse of theorem 2 is also true. So with that converse of this theorem 2 we can represent a theorem 3 like this one. Let x be a p by q. 
here x value we are taking in the decimal format here here we are taking the x value as fraction that is nothing but p by q let x is equal to p by q be a rational number such that the prime factorization of q is of the form of 2 to the power of n and 5 to the power of m where n m are non negative integers then x has a decimal expansion which terminates it's a converse of the same thing theorem 2 what we are saying if the decimal the x value is having a decimal expansion which terminates then the if we represent in the form of rational number we can get the values the p by q q denominator uh, as 2 to the power of n 5 to the power of m because 10 is having only two prime numbers that is 2 and 5 in the same way in the theorem 3 if we take x is equal to p by q if it is a rational number then prime factorization of q is of form 2 to the power of n and m to 5 to the power of m so this one we can say here 25 can be represented as 5 square so this is representing here in the form of 2 to the power of n and 5 to the power of m so the 5 to the power of m is represented already so if we can represent in this form then we can say that x has a decimal expansion which terminates till now we discussed about rational numbers how to convert if the number decimal is given to the rational number and if the rational number is given how to convert to the decimal values so vice versa is possible and denominator is having 2 and 5 multiple of 2 and 5 means we are saying that that is the terminating decimal factor let us see non terminating recurring decimals in rational numbers but suppose see the example 1 by 7 will it terminate if you see that the value of 1 by 7 is equal to 0 0.142857 and this set of numbers will be repeated that is reoccurring reoccurring is nothing but recurring it is coming continuously there is never ending process for that it is not terminating so that we are considering this 1 by 7 number as non terminating rational number if you observe 7 here it cannot be written in the form of 2 to the power of n and 5 to the power of m format because these are the prime factors for 10 only this cannot be done in the same way so 1 by 7 is non terminating recurring decimal so with this we can conclude a point that that is nothing but theorem 4 let x may be x is equal to p by q be a rational number such that the prime factorization the prime factorization of q is not of the form 2 to the power of m 5 to the power of m where n m are non negative integers then x has a x has a decimal expansion which is non terminating and repeating the same opposite for the terminating what you need to add here the same definition everything is same here we are representing not here this one you have to remember once you understand it is very much easy let x be p by q that is nothing but a rational number we know that such that the prime factorization of q the prime factorization of q that is nothing but denominator q is not of the form 2 to the power of n 5 to the power of m in the given example c7 7, 7 is not in the form of 2 to the power of n 5 to the power of m where n m are non, non negative integers then x has a decimal expansion which is non-terminating and recurring by using the above theorems we can check whether the given rational number is terminating or non-terminating but suppose given example is 16 by 125 if you observe here 16 by 3 times 5 that is 5 5 is 25 25 5 is 125 that is 5 q it is a terminating decimal without calculating decimal value for this fraction or rational number we are giving a conclusion that whether the value of this decimal is terminating or not how we are doing this one by applying these theorems when the denominator here this is the q value this is the p value when the q is in the form of 2 to the power of n and 5 to the power of m here we are having 5 to the power of m 5 cube here so that the value the decimal value will be terminating decimal see here in the another example that is 41 by 75 
If we factorize this one, 41 by 3 into 5 into 5. 41 by 3 into 5 square. Here, it is not the multiple of 2 to the power of n and 5 to the power of m. Here, I added 3 extra. 3 is not considered. We need to have only 2 and 5 here. As we are getting 3 prime number here, it is non-terminating repeating decimal. The value of this fraction will be, will be non-terminating repeating decimal. So till now we discussed about rational numbers which are terminating and which are non-terminating. How to identify the given number without calculating whether it is terminating or non-terminating rational number. Now let us see irrational numbers. What are irrational numbers? I have given introduction that square root 2, root over 3, root over 5. These are irrational numbers. The numbers which we cannot represent in the form of p by q are nothing but irrational numbers. Here the definition, see here, a real number that is q dash or s is called irrational if it cannot be written in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0. So, the numbers which we cannot represent in the form of p by q where p and q are integers and q is not equal to 0. Those numbers we can call it as irrational numbers. See here examples root 2, root 3, root 15 and pi value. See minus root 2 by root 3 and the decimal numbers like this. All these can be considered as irrational numbers. It means that we can conclude with a statement that root p, suppose p represents prime number, root p. P is prime number here. Root P is irrational where P is prime. If P is prime and the root of P is always irrational. With this we can conclude one statement that let P be a prime number. If P divides A square where A is a positive integer then P divides A. We have the statement like this. Let P be a prime number. If I suppose p is a prime number, if p divides a square, p divides a. With this statement, let us see how to give a proof for this. If p divides a square, how it is going to divide p a? Let a be any positive integers, then prime factorization of a is we can say that p1, p2 like pn. Then a square, we are having a as value this one that is p1 to pn. And if you take a square, multiple of this 2. Then we get the answer of p1 square, p2 square, so on, pn square. So the a square value is this one. Given that p divides a square. So in the statement, specifying that p divides a square. From the fundamental theorem of arithmetic, p is one of the prime factor of a square. Here we come to conclusion that p divides a square. Fundamental theorem of arithmetic, what it is saying? P is a is one of the prime factor of A square. It's true. We realize that the only prime factors of A square are P1, P2 to Pn. Because A square prime factors we are having. That is P1 to Pn. So P is one of P1, P2 to Pn. P will be available in this set somewhere. This is uniqueness of the theorem. So with this uniqueness of the theorem we are concluding that P is one of the primes of this list. So since P is one of P1, P2 to Pn, it divides A. If we want to check for that one, let us check for an example that is P is equal to 2. Take P is equal to 2. A square is equal to 1, 4, 9, 25, 36, 49, 64. Prime factorization for this one. A square is equal to 1 square, 2 square, 3 square, 5 square like that and 81. See here, if p is equal to 2, then a square is equal to 4, prime factor of 4. p divides a square, so p divides a as well. p divides a square, that is 2 divides 4. Then 2 divides 2, that is nothing but a value. We can prove the formula with this. We understood or not? See here, with the number example you will understand very much. When if we take p is equal to 2, then a square value is equal to 4. P that is 2 divides 4 as well as 2 divides 2. This is the value of A square 
and this is the value of a. Are we proving with this or not? If we take p is equal to 5, let us x, that is 5 and a square is equal to 25. 5 by 25 can be done and 5 by 5 also can be done. Using these theorems without actual division, we can calculate whether these numbers are terminating decimals or non-terminating. Let us see one example here, that is 16 by 125. We can factorize this 125 into 3 times 5, that is 5 cube. That is 16 by 5 cube. We are representing in the form of 5 cube, so it is terminating decimal. And another example, 41 by 75. If you take this one, 41 by 3 into 5 square, this examples already we discussed about it. For revision we are checking once again. And here we are not in the format of 2 to the power of n and 5 to the power of n. 3 added. So it is not terminating. Repeating decimal. In the same way writing decimal expansion. How to write the decimal expansion for the given rational number. That is 350 by 50. Expand this in the form of 2 to the power of n and 5 to the power of m. 7 5 35. 7 into 5. And the same way 2 into 2 times 5, that is 50. 5 5 is 25, 25 2 is 50. That is 7 by this 5, 5 cancelled and 7 by 2, 5 is 10. 10 to the power of 1, 0 0.7. So, it is the terminating decimal value. In the same way, given example is 7 by 8. This can be represented in the form of 2 cube. Both sides multiply with 5, that is 5 cube. 7 into 5 cube by 2 cube into 5 cube. 7 into 25. 5 cube is nothing but 7 into 125 by 2 into 5 whole cube. Because 2 cube is there, 5 cube is there. So 10 whole cube. 125 7 is 875. 125 7 is 875 by 10 cube. That is nothing but 3 decimals. We are having 3 power, right? So we need to put the decimal point before 3 digits. That is 0 0.875 is the answer. So... We know that root over p, where p is the prime number, we can consider those numbers as irrational. Let us prove that root 2 is irrational. So till now we are going in a positive manner. Now we go with the contradiction manner. So whatever they are saying that root 2 is irrational and we have to prove it. But suppose if you consider root 2 as irrational. But suppose if you consider root 2 as a rational number. Assume contrary that root 2 is rational. If it is rational, then it must exist 2 integers. If it is rational, then must exist 2 integers. That is R and S. Where S is not equal to 0. So we can represent root 2 in the form of rational number that is R by S. Suppose R and S have a common factor other than 1. Then we divide by the common factor to get root 2 is equal to a by b where a and b are co-primes. These are the common factors for r by s. So we can conclude that root 2 is equal to a by b where a, b are co-primes. With this we can simplify this one as transferring b to left side that is b root 2 is equal to a. To cancel this root we have both sides we have squaring. If we square both sides, this root get cancelled and b square will be coming here. b square 2 is equal to a square. b square 2 means we need to represent the constants in front of the any numbers. So we have to represent it this way. 2b square is equal to a square. Then b square is equal to transferring this constant value to the right side of the equal to. So b square is equal to a square by 2. Just before we learnt about statement 1 that is what it is stating 2 divides a square means it also divides a. So we can write that a is equal to 2c for some integer c is equal to some integer. Substitute for a we get what we get now we are having a value of a is equal to 2c. C is a constant. Substitute this value in the given formula we get 2b square is equal to 4c square. That implies b square is equal to c square by 4c square by 2. 2 twos are 4 and 2c square. What is the value we are getting? b square is equal to 2c square. This means that 2 divides b square. 
and so 2 divides B as well with the statement 1. Both A and B have 2 as a common factor. So it is 2 and it is 2. But this contradicts the fact that A and B are co-primes and have no common factors other than 1. When it is contradicting the actual fact that A and B are co-primes and have no common factor other than 1, this contradiction, why it, it arises, this contradiction has arise because of our assumption of root 2 is a rational number. So we can conclude that root 2 is irrational. In general, it can be shown that root d is irrational whenever d is a positive integer which is not the square of an integer. If it is square means we can simplify that one and root will be cancelled and if it is square we will get the integer value. As such it follows that root 6, root 8, root 15, root 24 are irrational numbers. But if we take root 16 it is not the irrational number. 4, 4 so 16 so 4 is the integer value. It is not considered as irrational. In the same way 25 also. Root over 25 is 5 fives. So 5 is the integer value. It is not considered as irrational number. This is the way you have to derive that by contradicting the given value as irrational. If we think rational, what are the properties of rational? Contradicting that, we are proving that the given number is irrational. See the another example for better understanding. Show that 3 root 2 is irrational. It is irrational they are giving and we have to show that. We have to prove that. How to that? Contrary, we are saying that 3 root 2 is rational. But suppose if we think that 3 root 2 is rational, what are the properties you should have? We can find co-primes of A and B. That is where B is not equal to 0. Such that 3 root 2 is equal to can be represented in the form of A by A. Root 2 is equal to transferring this 3 into here. A by 3B. Since 3 a and B are integers. A by 3B is rational. It is integers. No, 3A and B are integers. So, it is rational. R uh, root 2 is rational. But this contradicts that fact that root 2 is irrational. We know that root over any prime number is irrational. That is the basic idea. So, here these are the constants. These are the integers. So, when all these are integers, it is rational. Root 2 is irrational. So we can conclude that 3 root 2 is irrational. What are the noting points here? The sum of the two irrational numbers need not be irrational. Though root numbers that is root over prime numbers are irrational. If we add them the sum of the two irrational numbers need not be irrational always. For example if you take a is equal to root 2 and b is equal to minus root 2, then both a and b are irrational. This is, this is irrational and this is irrational. But if you take a plus b that is equal to 0, 0 number is not irrational. It is a rational number. So we have to make a note of it. The next point what you need to remember is the product of two irrational numbers also need not be irrational. The product of two irrational numbers need not be Irrational. Consider this example a is equal to root over 2 and b is equal to root over 8. If you see this one, these two are irrational numbers. If you take the product of that one, 8 to the 16, root over 16 is not an irrational number. We can simplify this as 4. So which is a rational number. In previous classes, you might have learned about all the properties of this one, properties of all real numbers. Let us have a glance about it. What are the properties? These are the properties list given here and the addition multiplication. Addition rule, multiplication rule. If you see closure property, what is a closure property? A plus B is equal to C and A into B is equal to C. That is the closure property. Commutative property. A plus B is equal to B plus A. Take example, take some examples for this one. If you take 2 plus 3 is equal to 5. This is the addition property. And if you take 2 into 3 is equal to 6. This is the multiplication property. In the same way, commutative property. What is commutative property here? A plus P is equal to P plus A. That is nothing but 
2 plus 3 is equal to 3 plus 2. Numbers change interchanging also, the value will be same. That's what here showing. 2 into 3 is equal to 3 into 2. Both are same only. 2 3s are 6, 3 2s are 6. Let us see associative property. What is associative property? A plus within the brackets B plus C is equal to within the brackets A plus B plus C. That is associative property. In the same way that will be applicable for multiplication as well. A into B C is equal to A B into C. Both are same. Identity. What is identity property here? A plus 0 is 0 plus A is equal to A. If we add 0 to any given number, the value will be the same number. That is nothing but identity property. So, multiplication, additive identity we call it as. So, additive identity is 0 because adding 0 will not affect the number. In the same way, multiplication identity is nothing but 1. If you multiply any number with 1, the same number will come. This is multiplicative identity and this is additive identity. And if you see inverse property, in inverse property of real numbers, inverse is nothing but changing the sign in front of the number. So A plus the inverse of A is equal to 0. In the same way A into 1 by A is equal to 1. A should not be 0. This is inverse property. Let us see final property of the real number that is distributive property. Distributive property is nothing but A into B plus C is equal to A B plus A C. Let us see this one with example. 2 into 3 plus 2 is equal to what they are saying with this distributive property 2 3 2 into 3 that is 2 into 3 plus 2 into 2. This is the C value. See here 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. 2 into 5. Here the B, B value is 3. 2 into 3. 3 2 is a 6 plus 2 2 is a 4. 2 5 is a 10. 6 plus 4 is equal to 10. See is this right or not? This is called distributive property. This you have to remove while dealing with the real numbers. And in this lesson we are introduced with uh, these logarithms as well. So what is logarithms? Understanding these logarithms is a very important rule. So first of all, we should understand what is logarithms, what are exponents, how to represent a number with the base and the power. If you observe here, let us take a number that is 81. It can be written as 3 to the power of 4. It means that 3 is the base value here and 4 is the exponent or the index. 81 is the 4th power of base 3. This way we can write. Similarly, if you take 27 number that can be represented as 3 cube. Here 3 is the base and this power 3 is exponent. Law of exponents is a to the power of m into a to the power of n where a is an integer. Then instead of multiplying these numbers, if we can multiply, if we can add the powers of that one, that will give the answer. See here, the law of exponents is equal to a to the power of m into a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m plus n. Just adding the powers. See, 27 into 81. To multiply these two numbers, it's a difficult task. Task. In the same way, if we take 3 digits into 4 digits, 4 by 4, 5 by 5, it is time taking process and a tedious task. So that if we convert the same numbers in the form of bases and powers, it is very much easy to calculate. So 27 can be represented as 3 cube and 81 can be represented as 3 to the power of 4. Based on the law of exponents, what we can do is the base will be coming like that and just we are adding the powers of that one. 4 plus 3 is nothing but 7. In the same way, law of exponents, another law of exponents are nothing but a to the power of m divided by a to the power of n is equal to a to the power of m minus n. So we are doing subtraction in the powers. Take the same example here. 81 divided by 27. 81 can be represented as 3 to the power of 4 and divided by 3 to the power of 3 cube for representing 27. What value we need to get? Base will come automatically. And we are performing subtraction operation. 4 minus 3 that is nothing but 1. If we represent 1, 1 or not, it's not a 
there is no much no difference for that so we are representing either 2 3 to the power of 1 or 3 is okay but we should remember that always m should be greater than n so that only we can perform this um, subtraction operation let us see writing exponents as logarithms writing a number in the form of base raised to a power is known as exponentiation exponentiation is nothing but just now we have seen how to represent a number in the form of base and powers that is nothing but we can say it as exponentiation we can also write this in another way called logarithms how to represent in the form of logarithms logarithms can be represented as log 10 10,000 is equal to 4 with this exponent form for this 10,000 is equal to 10,000 is equal to 10 to the power of 4 this is the exponent form and this is the base both are equal this is logarithmic expression and this is exponent form of expression in general if a to the power of n is equal to x i think we write it as how to write this one in the logarithmic form log and the value this one a x is equal to n the power will be coming to the right side of the equal where a and x are positive numbers a and x should be positive numbers and a should should not be 1 so this is the condition a and x should be positive numbers and a should not be 1 for example take 16 16 can be represented as 2 to the power of 4 how to represent this one in the logarithmic form see here logarithmic form log power is coming here log 4 16 isn't it do you understand or not see in the same here here also we are representing the same way log 10 log 10 10,000 in the same way log 4 16 loss of logarithm if you see loss of logarithm the first law is equal to x is equal to a to the power of n and y is equal to a to the power of m then where a greater than 0 and a is not equal to 1 then log a x is equal to n how we are representing here log see in this example same manner log a log a x is equal to n and log a y is equal to m the second law is log a x into y is equal to log a x plus log a y that is the second law of logarithms log a x by y here we are performing multiplication here division log by y is equal to log a x minus log a y check is this correct or not this expression if you observe the same example here i wrote something wrong here you need to represent in the form of log so how we need to write here the base should be gone right side the equal to so what is the power here 4 log and base value this is coming log 4 log 4 16 log 2 16 is equal to 4 this way you have to write log 2 16 is equal to 4 this is wrong observe once again here so this power power will go to the equal part and when we are this coming as a log 10 log 10 10,000 is equal to 4 in the same way here in the given example 16 is equal to 2 to the power of 4 then log 2 16 is equal to 4 likewise you have to write Till now we discussed about two laws of the logarithm. See here, the first law, that is x is equal to a to the power of n and y is equal to a to the power of n. Then where a greater than 0 and a is not equal to 1, then log a x is equal to n. Log a x is equal to n. And log a y is equal to m. The second law is nothing but division property and multiplication property. Log a x y is nothing but log a x plus log a y log a x by y is equal to log a x minus log a y the third law of algorithms are let x is equal to a to the power of n so log a x is equal to n raise both sides of x is equal to a to the power of n to the power m so both sides we are raising the powers with m both sides powering m x to the power of m as a single quantity then logarithmic form of it is x to the power of m we are taking as a single quantity 
log a x to the power of m is equal to n into m. Log a x to the power of m is equal to m into log a x. Then a to the power of n is equal to x. So log a x is equal to n. Because we already have here a to the power of x is equal to a to the power of n. So log a x is nothing but log a x is equal to nothing but n. We are substituting n here with the log a x instead of n we are substituting here. It states that the logarithm of a power number can be obtained by multiplying the logarithm of the numbers by that power. So what we conclude here? log a x to the power of m is equal to m into log a x. Logarithm of power number can be obtained. The power number how to obtain this one? Multiplying the logarithm of the number by that power. So with this power we are multiplying to get the logarithmic value. For example take log 15. Log a x y is equal to log a x plus log a y with the Second law. So second law what it is saying log a x y is nothing but addition of log a x plus log a y. So log 15 is equal to log into 3 into 5. 3 5 is a 15. That is nothing but log 3 plus log 5. Take another example log 343 by 125. In the second theorem that is in the second law we observed that it is nothing but log a x by y is equal to log a x minus log a y. So log 343 minus log 125 gives the value of this logarithmic value. That is nothing but if we factorize this one prime factorization of this 343 and 125 is nothing but log 7 cube minus log 5 cube. By checking the answers for log 7 cube and by minus log 5 cube we will get the answer of log 343 by 125. So this is not coming for your exam but they have given the information in your textbook. Let us have a glance about this standard base of a logarithm. We are having two bases for logarithmic approach. Generally we know that base 10. There are two bases that is first base is 10 and the other base we can observe in the calculator that is e that is exponent value e. Base 10 is usually we are using the same approach that is with the base 10. Log x implies base is 10. When we are representing log x, it is saying that we are taking base as the 10. Log 2, what is the value of log 2? If we see the logarithm, you can see the answer like this. 0 0.30102399564. In the same way log 3, the value of log 3 is 0 0.47712 like that. If we see the another base that is e, it is called exponential constant. E is nothing but exponential uh, constant. It is an irrational number with an infinite and non-terminating, non-recurring decimal expansion. Observe here, this is used to represent non-terminating and non-recurring as well. Non-recurring decimal expansions we should represent with the base E. And usually approximated as 2.718. The base value for this e exponent value base e is approximated to 2.718. It is used in scientific and mathematical applications. Log e can also write as ln. If you want to represent log e, simply we can put ln. So ln x implies that base is e not 10. Whenever we see that ln, some variable here, we should understand that the base is e. Also this one we also called as natural logarithms. These are called natural logarithms. Ln gives a natural logs. This one you can observe in your calculators as well. If you see a button called ln with labeled ln we should understand that that is the natural logs with base e. So this is the overall concept about standard basis of a logarithm. So with this we can conclude the real numbers concept. If we have a glance about real numbers concept, you should understand that what are the real numbers. In the real numbers, what are rational and irrational numbers. Irrational numbers if you take whether those are terminating or not terminating. If you take rational numbers, 
these rational numbers are terminating or not terminating without calculating how to understand the given number is terminating number or not non terminating number if you come to the irrational number how to find a given number is irrational by contradicting method and by positive method and understanding these theorems understanding the statements of logarithms laws of logarithms how to make use of them in our daily life these are the things we covered in the real numbers thank you see you in the next video